Or, and, Scott, let's kind of wrap those two stories together. Fauci saying that uh, any one of these vaccines may not last or, or be as durable as we're hoping. Um, and then your thoughts that us stepping away from the WHO is going to lead to potential problems with developing a vaccine. What, what, what is your concern there? Right. Well, this is probably going to be a seasonal vaccine. The coronavirus vaccine is probably a vaccine that we're going to need to take every year. And Dr. Fauci is right. The immunity is not going to be um, long term in the, in the form of like a smallpox vaccine or a polio vaccine where you get the vaccine once and you're protected for life or most of your life or a measles vaccine. You're going to need to take this shot regularly and maybe annually. And the, the immunity might last up to a year. We really don't know right now the protective immunity. It does appear that people who have the disease and recover have immunity that could last up to a year, maybe more in some people. It also is going to depend on which vaccine you're talking about. Some of these vaccine platforms, like, like the adenoviral vector platform, the platforms that use viruses to actually deliver parts of the coronavirus to stimulate our immune system. So those are the vaccines by Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca have vaccine candidates that use those kinds of platforms. Those might um, stimulate a cell-based immunity. So they might stimulate T cells which might be longer term and provide some longer term protection. So we really don't know. But I think the expectation should be that this is going to be a seasonal vaccine. As far as the WHO is concerned, one of the things the WHO does in collaboration with the CDC and one of its important missions is it tracks globally different flu strains. So you have about 150 labs contributing strains of flu around the world and those strains get sequenced. And then we use the data from that, that project every year, this effort, to make decisions about what strains to put into the vaccine, which, which types of flu are circulating around the world globally. We're going to need something analogous for COVID because COVID is going to probably circulate globally. It's probably going to undergo genetic drift. So we're going to want to know what strains are circulating so that we can tweak our vaccines, maybe not annually, but certainly every few years we're going to want to tweak these vaccines to make sure they reflect the strains as they change genetically. And so with the WHO not properly funded, it's not clear how they're going to carry out that mission for flu and then how they're going to stand up an analogous project related to COVID. Scott, when you start talking about uh, and comparing this to the influenza vaccine, I mean, I get the influenza vaccine every year. I try and get the, uh, the at least the try one that, that protects you against three different strains. Um, but it doesn't always work. It's not always effective and they don't always pick the right strains. Are we talking about a similar situation with any vaccines for the coronavirus? Probably not. It's probably going to be a vaccine that you'll get um, every year and you'll probably get it at the same time that you get the flu vaccine. But probably with the COVID virus, it's not going to undergo genetic change within the span of a season or as rapidly mutate. And so there's, it's going to be a little bit more preserved. So the vaccine is probably going to need to get re-engineered. What we've seen in the genetic sequencing data is that the portion of the virus um, that we're using in these vaccines, the spike protein that we talked about, it undergoes genetic change, but not, not rapidly. Probably every two or three years, you'll want to engineer the, vi the vaccine differently to reflect um, how that sequence is drifting. But it's going, to need to, it's going to need to undergo changes. I don't think that the vaccine itself should be obviated within the span of a season, but we don't know. I mean, we don't even have a vaccine yet. But based on how we understand this virus, the vaccine itself should be preserved within the span of one season. So the kinds of challenges that we've had with the flu um, vaccine, and I was at FDA in 2017 and 2018, one of the years when the vaccine wasn't that effective because the virus had undergone mutations, some unexpected changes. Those kinds of changes we're unlikely to see with coronavirus based on how we understand it right now.